Most reasonably complex applications produce call trees that contain some recursive calls. It doesn't have to be recursion in an algorithmic sense, like when you're calculating Fibonacci numbers. Recursion simply occurs when you call a method that has already been called in the current call stack. When you work with a call tree in JProfiler, this is inconvenient because you don't get a good sense of where the time is actually being spent. Here I'm showing an example of a very simple XML parser. Let's expand the call tree a little along the line of the maximum performance impact. We can see that the XML file is parsed recursively and that the process element method here does some interesting work, which doesn't amount to much because it's fragmented across all the recursive levels. So it's pretty impossible to see what's going on. Now here comes the idea. If you were able to sum the non-recursive part of the call tree for all the invocations of process element, you would get some really valuable insight into the performance characteristics of the XML parser. The good news is that JProfiler contains a call tree analysis that can collapse recursions in the selected subtree. So we select the method that contains the entire recursion and then we choose analyze collapse recursions. They're key bindings for all the call tree analysis, so we can perform them quickly without opening any menus. The first thing that we notice is that we're not in the call tree anymore. We're in a nested analysis view. And in the case of a live session, such a nested analysis view is static. It doesn't auto-update as you record more data. The root of the call tree is now the scan data method that we selected when we executed the analysis action in the call tree. And the call tree root in the header here informs us about the call stack prefix to that scan data method. 26 recursions have been detected in the selected subtree and all of those 26 recursions are at this place here. And when we open the merged call tree, we can see that the outgoing method calls of the process element method now show a meaningful statistical distribution. And down here, we see that all calls to scan some tag, which would create the recursive structure of a call tree, have been removed and stitched back, so to say, to the topmost occurrence of the scan some tag method. 26 recursions means that the method has actually been called from 27 different call stacks. Once non-recursively, and 26 times from the different levels of recursion. For the outgoing method calls, this means that there is a maximum of 27 merged stacks. However, as we open the call tree, we can see that these numbers get smaller. This is because each recursion contributes a potentially different call tree to the recursion. That's typical for this kind of analysis. The deeper we go, the smaller the merged stack numbers unless you hit another recursion. This is a very simple example and I would like to show you a more complicated one. I have another window open here where the Java compiler has been profiled. Language parsers produce massively complicated call trees with lots of recursions. Here you can see that this call tree has been stitched together in over 6,000 different places. There are nested recursions, there are overlapping recursions, and in order to understand the exact recursion numbers and the merge stack numbers, we would need an intimate knowledge of the actual execution flow. However, for a performance analysis, this investigation is not so important. What's important is that the call stacks are understandable. They are collapsed, but the detail that has been eliminated is redundant and distracting. Let's take the example of the 28 merge stacks of the visit select method here. In the actual call tree, these stacks are scattered deep inside a huge call tree. Just for the sake of understanding of how such methods are actually called, the collapsed recursions view is at your service.